Thank you for letting me know. Just, uh, so let's restart the class. Well, I had a question at the break time, and uh, just about this one positive effect on cash flow. What's affecting the cash flow is just tax benefit, right? Tax benefit is the thing that's affecting the cash flow. So if we get a tax benefit, we have a higher cash flow, okay? If we don't get a tax benefit, we're going to have a lower cash flow. So when this, we see this question, which has a positive effect on cash flow? In this case, we have to think about which one has a higher tax benefit? Whatever one has a higher tax benefit has a higher, better effect on cash flows, right? Uh, in this case, what effect on income? Uh, the effect on income is not as important as the effect on, on cash flow, right? When we're, we're talking about returns. We might want to show that uh, we have a higher income for our stockholders or our investors. For example, in the first year, if we don't have any good income, People might decide, I don't want to invest in that company. They lost a lot of money in the first year, right? So, we also have income, but income is easier to see. Just we do addition here. In year zero, revenue zero. In this case, expenses minus 100. Income minus 100, okay? But in the other case of depreciation, revenue zero, depreciation zero, Income zero. Year one, revenue is 50. Here is expenses zero. Income, 50. Okay? Revenue, 50. Depreciation, 33.3. Income, 16.7. Okay? It's going to be the same here. Revenue, 60. Zero. Income, 60. Uh, revenue, 60. Expenses 33, income 27.3, okay? So, if we use depreciation, it's clear that we're going to have higher income in year zero or year, the first year, right? And lower income over the rest of the years. If we use capital expenditure, we are going to have low income the first year, okay? Minus, negative, and higher income the rest of the years. For tax purposes, which is better to say, I have higher income or lower income? Okay, so if I say I have higher income, I have to pay more tax. If I say I have lower income, I pay less tax. Okay, so we, we have this calculation for the tax benefit. Every year, just calculate the tax benefit, which is the depreciation multiplied by the tax rate. This is the benefit we get for our cash flow. So, do we have any more questions about this? Can you understand why we don't just put this all as an expense in year zero and we put it, we use it as an operating expense, right? Because of this tax benefit, okay? Each year. So, usually, for young companies, they don't make much profit in the first few years. They make a loss, okay? And then they start to make a profit later. So they prefer to do this system. If, you make, if you're making a profit in the first year, a high profit in the first year anyway, you make more than 100 million in the first year, then anyway you got your tax benefit. Maybe you prefer to get your tax benefit here. Okay? Can you understand? Let's say we write here, we make 150 million in the first year then maybe we might decide not to do depreciation because anyway we got this tax benefit 100 multiplied by the tax rate if we do every year our tax benefit will be anyway will add up to 100 multiplied by the tax rate okay so what we're saying is in the case which is a very normal case where you make an investment like a project you make a large investment at the start you don't make much revenues or you make a loss in the first few years and then you make a higher revenues as time goes on. 
in that case, it makes sense to use depreciation, okay? Because we get a tax benefit in the later years. Okay, any more questions about that? Okay, then let's move on to working capital. Okay, so again, we're talking about accounting. So money invested in inventory, we talked about inventory in the last class. What is inventory? Stock. What is the inventory of the shop downstairs? Snacks and so on, right, that you can see in the shop, okay? Money, that, cash that we use in the inventory, can I use that cash anywhere else? Can I invest that cash in US government bonds? Which, do you, which is more value, which is earning more, cash or inventory? For the company. Which would you prefer to have if you're not doing anything with it? Cash or inventory? Cash, why? Cash is the right answer, why? You can invest the cash in US government bonds and get some interest, right? Or another investment, but at the minimum, we can invest the cash in the US government bond or term deposit account, or even just put it in the bank and get some interest. Are we getting any interest on our inventory? No, right? So generally, having less inventory is better for a company, okay? Have you heard of just-in-time production? Just-in-time? It's a Japanese, uh, Toyota started this system. It means that they, they want to have very low inventory. They don't like inventory, right? So, in just-in-time, this is the factory. Okay? The, we have goods coming in and goods going out. So Toyota is making cars. What kind of goods does Toyota have coming in? Tires. What kind of goods does it have going out? Cars. Do you understand tires? Hankook makes tires in Korea, right? So does Toyota want to have a lot of tires? My art is not very good, but this, this is my art. Does Toyota want to have a lot of tires in inventory, sitting in the factory doing nothing? No, it's using up space. They could be using the space for something else. Also, it's using up cash. I have to pay the company for the tires. So I'm using, I could be using that cash to invest somewhere else. So what I want is just in time. Do you understand just in time? What does it mean, just in time? Can you translate into your language? Just in time? This guy was just in time to hear this part, right? Wasn't in time for the start of the class, but just in time to hear this part. So just in time means just at the right time, just at the exact time. Superman or Batman, they usually arrive just in time, okay? Superman doesn't arrive just after the accident happened and say, oh no, I couldn't save the people. I wasn't in time, right? Instead, Superman comes in just in time just as the bus is about to fall off the cliff, Superman saves the bus, puts it back on the road. Okay, that's just in time. So for tires, we want the tires to arrive just as we're making the car. So we have a very low inventory. The tire arrives today, I put the tire on the car today, the car goes out today. So I have very small inventory, okay? Do you understand that idea? Okay, you can get a qualification in this kind of thing. It's called Six Sigma. Also called Lean Manufacturing. Lean Manufacturing. Okay, you can get this kind of qualification, which means that you can organize the system for the company. The goods go in and come out immediately. Okay? So it's the same for the shop. The shop doesn't want to have too many packets of Doritos. So often when you go to the shop, you can see somebody there putting Doritos on the shelf. Okay? Uh, they don't want, they want the space for other products. Other products, then people would buy more products, okay? So you can see shops like 7-Eleven or GS, they also have a very small amount of yogurt. And then the yogurt will arrive just in time and then they'll put it in. They're hoping that just as they put in the yogurt, people come and buy the yogurt. 
right? They don't want to have one shelf full of yogurt. Then they can't sell other products, okay? So that's an, I an idea that we need to understand here. We don't want to have too much inventory. We're going to have less cash, okay? We don't want to have too much accounts receivable. What does accounts receivable mean in easy English? What is accounts receivable? We sell something and we can bet the money. Okay, we didn't get the money yet. We are waiting to receive the money, right? We sold something and we are waiting to receive the money. Which do you prefer? To be waiting to receive the money or to have the money now? Right. Why? 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 What's the difference between getting the money today or next month? Hmm? Time value of money. How much can you make if I give you $100 today or next month? If you invest in, let's say, the US government bond is 2%. Right, divide 2 by 12, you get the uh, answer for one year, for one month, right? Yeah. So let's say we divide by 10, it's about 2%, or 0.2%, right? So more accurately, 0.175, right? So you're going to get 0.2% of $100. Okay, so not even two dollars, right? Two percent would be two dollars, so you'll get twenty cents. Is that a big difference? If I give you a hundred dollars now or a hundred dollars next month, twenty cents? No, what about a million dollars? Right, if we go up to a million dollars, it might be two thousand dollars, right? Or twenty thousand dollars, so it's different now, right? So if the company is large, dealing in large amounts of money, then 0.2 percent can be a lot, a lot of money, okay? So we want to get the money in cash earlier. Same with inventory. We don't want to have our money in inventory. We don't want to have all our money in accounts receivable. Okay? So the lower the accounts receivable, the better. On the other hand, we can also finance our investments using accounts payable. This can increase our cash flow. What's an easy way to say accounts payable in English? Accounts receivable is we sold the goods and we're waiting to get the money. What's accounts payable? What's the opposite? We bought the goods and we're waiting to pay. Which do you prefer, to pay now or to pay after one month? Pay after one month, right? It's the same idea, but we can get an advantage this time. So if we can delay paying our suppliers, then we can have an uh, increase in our cash flow, okay? Uh, so investments in working capital are thus cash outflows. So I invest money in inventory and accounts receivable, my cash is going out. So any increase in working capital reduces my cash flow. Any decrease in working capital increases cash flow for this year. So I'm going to ask a question. Could we ever have a negative working capital? It says here increase or decrease in working capital. Do, is it possible to have a negative number for working capital? If we think that we, working capital is made up of inventory, accounts receivable, and accounts payable, can we have a negative working capital? What do you think? So here we can see the equation. Non-cash working capital is inventory plus accounts receivable minus accounts payable. Do you think that this number could be negative? Or not? Never negative. Or could be possibly could be negative. What do you think? So working capital, non-cash. is equals to inventory plus accounts receivable minus accounts payable. Can this number be negative or not? What do you think? <coughs> Maybe, yes. So the answer is yes. How could it be negative? Uh, when, uh, the balance, uh, <coughs> 
Yes, so if our accounts payable is 100, right? Our accounts receivable is 50, and our inventory is 20. We have low inventory, we don't have much accounts receivable. We are making, we are being quite mean to all of our customers. We're telling them, pay me now, pay me the cash now, right? And then to our suppliers, we're also being mean. We're saying, oh, I have no money, I can't pay you now, you have to wait. Okay, so it could be possible that we have a negative number here. So. Anyway, if we increase our working capital, this number is higher. We're going to have lower cash flows. If we decrease our working capital, uh, we're going to increase our cash flow. So could you tell me, looking at this, how can I increase my cash flow? What do I need to do? So I want to increase my cash flow. So decrease my working capital, okay? So I want to make this total number lower, right? So we want to make the account table higher, and these numbers lower, okay? Then we can uh, increase our cash flow. There's something else we need to think about. Working capital investments need to be salvaged at the end of the project life. Do you understand salvage? What was salvage we talked about in the last class? Salvage value, what does that mean? What would be the salvage value for Disney? What kind of things would they get salvaged from? Salvage is, uh, if we understand the exact meaning of salvage, it might help us to, not the financial meaning, it might help to understand. So we get uh, salvage from a ship. Okay, so the ship sinks. Okay, the, sh the ship goes on, is broken, right? It's on the sea, but it's broken, it's no good anymore. But it has a lot of stock on the ship, like gold and uh, silver. What are you going to do? Are you going to leave the gold and silver to sink into the ocean or are you going to take it off the ship? Take it off the ship, right? That is called salvage. Okay? So even though the ship is broken and we're not using it anymore, we can salvage something from the ship or even we can use the wooden part of the ship. So we can take uh, some part of the ship these are Google images for salvage, right? You can see they're using the ship. So the ship crashed and all these things fell off the ship. But we're going to salvage them. We're going to save them and get some uh, value from that. Okay, here we can see they're salvaging something from the ship. So when we talk about salvage in finance, we're talking about at the end of the the end of the project, okay? We close down the company, but we can sell things and get money back. So you often see for the clothes shop, the clothes shop is closing down, right? Yes. Shop is closing down, usually they have a sale. Yes. So they sell off their inventory. So the inventory has some salvage value, okay? So at the end of the, at the, end of the project, we can sell our inventory Say our inventory was 20, we might not get 20, we might get 10. It's the salvage value. So, if we don't think about working capital, we will overstate the cash flows on the project and make it look more attractive than it really is. So, as we said, a reduction in the capital requirement will increase the cash flow. So here, this is how we are going to increase our cash flow. Minimize inventory, okay? <coughs> so try to make a system where the inventory is quite low. Get our customers to pay the bill faster and improve collection. How can you get your customers to pay the bill faster? How can you do that? By contract. By contract, any other thing? So contracts are different in different parts of the world. In Northern Europe, Usually, 
they give one month credit. It's called credit, right? In France, they give two months. In Southern Europe, Spain, they give three months. In Italy, three months, okay? In South America, it might even be longer, okay? So it depends on the part of the world you're in. So as you say, you can make a contract, but it depends on your country's culture. If I'm in Spain and I tell you you have to pay after one month, you might be happy because he said you could pay after three months, right? So any other way we can encourage people to pay their bills faster? Maybe give a discount if they pay your Okay, give a discount. Not higher than the rate on the US government bond, right? Or some incentive. Any other way? How do they incentivize people to pay their electricity bill? Hmm? What? They'll cut off your electricity. That's the punishment. To do some punishment. In Ireland, if you pay your electricity bill on time, you enter some draw for a prize. I don't know if anybody ever wins the prize, but anyway, they have a draw, right? Uh, so you can try to make some incentive for people to pay faster. And also you can find suppliers who offer generous credit terms. It means the supplier is going to let you pay after a longer time, okay? So in this way, we can manage our working capital to increase our cash flow, to have more cash. So then, the cash flow to firm is the EBIT, earnings before interest and taxes, minus the tax rate, plus depreciation, minus the change in non-cash working capital, minus capital expenditures. So as we said, for example, in non-cash working capital, we had uh, we have accounts receivable and accounts payable. In accounting, where is the income for accounts receivable and accounts payable? It's different than the cash, right? Let's say that I get some goods in December of year one, I buy goods. So December of year one, I buy some goods. What's this, accounts receivable or accounts payable? Accounts payable. So I buy goods, I need to pay. So accounts payable is recorded. The accountants record that in December. But did I, get, did I spend the cash yet? No, I didn't, right? So a little bit different between the accounting way and the cash way, right? So one way is depreciation, another way is change in working capital. And another way is uh, capital expenditure, which like maintenance or so on. So we're basically we're fixing, fixing the income statement, changing it to cash. So let's have a look at the example. So this is Disney. So we have here uh, the operating income taxes, operating income after taxes, okay? Then we're going to add back in depreciation because up here, we already took out depreciation, okay? If we go back, if we go back to our accounting returns up here, we can see that we already, we put in depreciation, okay, here. We already subtracted depreciation here before we got our net income. So now we have to go and add it back in because we're changing it to cash. Cash flows. So in this year, let's say year two, we added, in the accounting way, we had depreciation of 425. Did we spend $425 in cash this year? or sorry, 425,000 or 425 million. Did we spend that much in cash this year? No, right? So in order to change this to cash, we have to add this number back. We didn't spend this money this year in reality, okay? But in accounting, we said minus 425 up here. 
So now we didn't spend this money, so we need to add 425. Okay? Capital expenditures. We're going to subtract. Okay? In the accounting view, we said year zero, zero expenses. Did we really have zero expenses in cash in year zero? Or did we spend the cash in year zero? In year zero, in reality, did we spend cash or not? We spent cash. Why did we spend cash? We had to, to buy what? Equipment and so on, right? But we're, you, that's, that wasn't in the accounting return. Year zero was zero. So we have to put that in. Minus 2,500, we spent this cash. We spent this cash in year two. We spent this cash. This is maintenance, right? Maintenance. We spent this cash in these years. Then we have change in working capital. The first two years, we weren't doing any business. Okay, we didn't have inventory or accounts receivable, accounts payable. But then we start uh, to have change in working capital. We put that in here because uh, the first year we can see it's a higher number. So the first year, our change in working capital, we probably, in 63, so it would be something like this. We bought a lot of inventory in the first year, 80. Okay? We have accounts receivable and accounts payable. So accounts receivable, say 20, and accounts payable, 37, equals 63. Okay? So what happened in this year is that our, uh, account, our working capital changed. This is the first year. Then the second year, we already have uh, some inventory, but we need some more inventory. So inventory will be lower. Next year, we already bought most of our inventory. It'll just be 10, and then so on, to make it 25. So we have to subtract this, okay? We spent this money in cash. We spent this money in cash for our uh, inventory, for example. Then we have the cash flow to the company in the end. So we're changing our accounting value to cash flow value every year. Okay? So what can we notice? We can notice that the first year in the accounting value, we had zero for operating income. No income, no loss. But when we do the cash flow to the company, we find out it was minus 2.5 billion. So generally at the start here, using cash, we're going to have lower income at the start, okay? And then using the uh, depreciation, we're going to have higher income here at the start, okay? And then it will change as we go on. So, other things we can think about here, we'll talk about it in a minute, is pre-project investment. If we want, we can think about this too. Pre-project depreciation and uh, general and administrative costs. So of this 2.5 uh, million, billion, sorry, 500 was uh, pre-project investment. So what do you think? The money that we invested before we started the project should we count this or don't count this? The money we invest before we decide to take a project, should we count this or not count that? Should count. Should not, why not? Should count. You should count, why? Uh, because you can uh, have a tax benefit. No? Have a tax benefit. No? Okay, well I mean, when we are deciding whether to do this uh, project or not, we are comparing our hurdle rate against the return. So when we are calculating the return, should we include the pre-project investment, the investment we made before we are making this decision? So we can think about that. Uh, we are going to talk about this now. It's called sunk cost. So any expenditure that has already been incurred and cannot be recovered is called a sunk cost. 
So we have a name for this kind of thing. We already spent the money, we're not going to get it back. So for Disneyland, before we decide to buy the equipment, we have to make some planning. We don't just go and buy the land and buy the equipment, okay? We have to make a plan. We have to analyze the uh, Brazilian market, do some market research, right? We need to get the planning permission. Do you understand planning permission? How do I say planning permission in Korean? How do I say planning permission in Korean? If you want, can you just build a house anywhere? Can I buy land just next to the university and build my own house? No, what do I need first? Yes, what's that called in Korean? Hogak. 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 Like Horok? A little bit like Horok? Okay. If sometimes I can't play soccer, the Korean friends ask me why can't you play soccer? I say, Anega Horok and Is that correct? She didn't give me permission. So I can understand where that ha is something to do with permission. Right? So you need a planning permission. Uh, to uh, make a project, right? So we have to get planning permission, apply for planning permission, and that costs money. So this is called a sunk cost. So for example, a test market for a consumer product and or the expenses would be good examples. So when we analyze a project, sunk costs should not be considered because they are not incremental. So the reason that we don't consider that is that we've already spent that money, okay? And now we have to think from now, should we make the project? Is the return higher than the hurdle rate from now? <coughs> then we can make the decision, okay? We don't include the sunk cost. So let me just give an example. So I spent 500 million to get the planning permission and research. In year zero, right before the project, okay? Now I have a project. According to the project, my hurdle rate is, let's say my hurdle rate is 6%. But my return on capital every year is going to be 7%. So I make 1% a year more, right? But if I look at this money, it's going to, if I include this money, it's going to be a loss. But if I don't include this money, it's going, I'm going to be making 1% a year, okay? So if I don't think about this money, should I do this project or not? My return is higher than my cost of capital, yes. Okay? If I think about this money, if I put, add this money in here, then my return on capital is going to go down to 5.5% if I add in this money. Okay? Then I don't do the project. Okay? So we are here. This is now. So if I said, oh, this is too low compared to this now, that's not a good comparison. Because I already spent this money. I'm not going to get this money back anyway. Do you understand sunk? Yep. Sunk means it's already gone. Sunk is under the ground. The ship is already sunk. It's already gone, okay? So what do you think? Should I consider this money now when I'm looking forward, ready, ready to make the investment or not? Yes or no? Yes. Why? Why do you say yes? Okay, this is what we have here. Behavioral aside, it is a well-established finding in psychological and behavioral research that most managers find it almost impossible to ignore some costs, okay? So you guys are proving this, this theory, that it's hard for people to ignore 
things that they did in the past, okay, which is uh, not going to affect the future, right? It's hard for people to do that, but you need to do that, okay? How can I explain this? This money is already gone. We are here now. This money is already gone, okay? So we have to think about the seven just the seven percent. What's going to happen in the future? In the future, if I invest, if I keep going, I'm going to make seven percent over six percent, okay? So I need to keep going. Does that make sense? Seven percent is better than six percent. Yes. Yes. So keep going. Yes. Yes. Okay. So we have to be forward-looking. Okay. In in finance. If I'm thinking about the past, then I'm going to make the wrong decision. I'm going to say, don't invest here, because the return on capital is just 5.5%, including this. Okay, so I lost out. I should have invested here. Okay, we have to be forward-looking. In this case, we already spent the money. We're not, can we get this money back ever? No, never get the money back, so it's gone. It's sunk. Forget about it. Okay? And let's think forward. Okay, let me give you an example. People also do this in their life, okay? Let's say that you spent uh, five years in university studying about horses. Do you have a degree about horses in Korea? Maybe not, in Ireland, right? Okay, let's say that you spent four years in uh, university studying music, okay? Then you graduate with music degree. But you can't find a job anywhere. And actually the market is very bad for music. And for some reason the economy is very bad. And it looks like you can't make a good career in music. Okay? So you have a choice. You can say, I already spent four years studying music. So I'm not giving up. I'm going to continue to study music and try to find a job in music until I die, right? Or you could say, uh, looking forward, I think it's better for me to get a qualification in data mining. Data mining is a new area where companies are very interested in, okay? So if I do a one-year program in data mining, a master's degree or something certificate, then I can get a good job in data mining, okay? So many people, I don't know if this is a good example, but Many people, when they're making decisions, they are too affected by the past, what they did in the past, okay? They said, oh, I already spent four years studying music, so I don't want to waste the four years. I want to keep going and keep going, even though I will never find a job. I'm going to keep uh, studying music, right? So I'm not saying that people who study music can't find a job, I'm just trying to find an example, okay? Where people might say in the past, I did this, so I have to keep doing this, right? I have to continue doing this. Whereas people, when you're making decision, you should be forward-looking in your decision. Okay, you have to forget about the past, and you have to decide, what is the best option for me in the future? Do you understand that idea? Okay, so in people's personal lives, they can make that mistake. They can say, I already did this, I already invested my time, my money, and my resources in this thing. So, they don't make the right decision about the future. They think too much about the past, what they did in the past. So they don't make forward-looking decision. Okay? Whereas, in fact, they should look at the future. Okay, what should, what's the best decision for me to do now, based on the future? So it's the same principle in finance. You have to try and get rid of this behavioral and psychological trait, if you want to be a financial manager. You have to get rid of this psychological and behavioral trait that I already invested in this area. So I have to keep doing that. Okay? Just a simple thing, just for investing money. I invested my money in a fund for Brazil. And in the future, the Brazilian economy outlook is very bad. Right? But I say, no, I already spent a lot of effort and research to analyze Brazil, and I already invested my money there. So, I'm going to leave my money invested in Brazil.
But really you should be forward looking. The Brazilian economy is not going well. It looks really bad. All the four course paths are very bad for the next three to five years. I should change. I should take my money out of Brazil. And I should invest in the US, for example. The US is growing very quickly, right? So I have to be forward looking. I can't just say, no, I already put a lot of effort into analyzing this and finding this and doing this, right? So what? Then you just have to write this off. I lost my money, right? Do you do gambling on cards? No, in Korea, it's, gambling is not very legal, right? In Ireland, it's legal, right? But some people will be gambling on the card game and they'll say, oh, I already lost a lot of money on the card game, so I have to keep gambling. I have to make my money back, right? Even if the other player is better than them. Okay, do you play Ghost Stop? Do you gamble on the Ghost Stop? I played Ghost Stop with my wife's father, but he used to play Ghost Stop with his friends. He's a very good player, right? So, if I start losing money to my wife's father, anyway, it's a good idea to lose money to my wife's father, right? I don't, I don't want to win money. He's going to get angry and not like me. So I, I can lose Ochan Wan or Man Wan, it's okay, right? Make him feel happy, then he feels like he's the boss. Right? I'm just a small guy. Right, like that. Oh, well done, you won 10,000 won. You're better at playing Ghost Stop than me. I, I don't think he's going to watch the video, so I think I'm okay. So, anyway. If he's very good at playing Ghost Stop, and I'm very bad, but I'm starting to lose my money, then I guess I start to get angry, right? What should I do? Should I keep playing or not? If I'm thinking about the past, I might think, oh, I already lost my money, so I need to keep playing to get my money back. But if I think about the future, I see he's a better player than me, okay? I'm not going to win against him. He has experience playing Ghost Stop for 10 or 15 years. I just have experience just a short time. So I have to be forward looking and say, okay, I already lost my money, that's fine. Okay, no more. I lost this money and that's it. Okay? Unless it's your father-in-law, you can keep playing because it's okay to lose some money, right? Makes him feel better. <laughs> but usually we have to think about forward thinking. Can everybody understand that? Yes. Yes? In your life, do you use forward thinking or do you think about, oh, I already did spend a lot of time and effort on this, so I have to continue, right? May after the class, maybe somebody is going to break up with their boyfriend, right? They're going to think, before they thought, oh, I spent a lot of time and effort on this relationship with my boyfriend, so I can't break up with him. What about all those weeks and presents I bought, right? But then the relationship is really bad, their boyfriend is not very nice. So if they look into the forward, or it could be girlfriend, maybe, maybe he's going to get broken up with, he's leaving the room, right? So if we think about the future relationship, we might say, forget about the past, forget about all the time and effort we spent on the relationship, that's gone now anyway, it's in the past, right? It's gone. So I think about the future. Am I going to be happier with this person or with somebody else, right? I'm going to be happier with this person, stay together. We can improve the relationship, it's okay, right? I'm happier with somebody else, break up. But many people, as we see here in behavioral psychology, they just think about the past, right? They think, oh, I already spent a lot of time with them, and I already did this, and I already did this, right? So I'm sorry if you get broken up with after the class by your, if there is some CC here. I know there's one CC here. Is there another many CCs in the class? Campus couple? No? Okay, don't blame me. It's better for you in the long run. Anyway. Okay. I, I'm doing you a favor. Okay, so... That's an, an idea for psychology and also for finance that we should understand, which is... Uh, we have to ignore the past cost and go into the future. So let's discuss this question with our uh, partner about some cost. A consumer product company has spent 100 million on test marketing. Looking at only the incremental cash flow, 
Incremental means we're ignoring the test marketing or the money we spent in the past. The project looks like it will create $25 million in value for the company. Should I take the investment? Yes or no? Okay, so discuss with your partner. I don't give out until I finish all together. It's not fair to give some to one student and not to other Yes. Yes, we are correct. Yes, we are correct the test. You have to correct us. Yes. <laughs> Okay, so let's check and see. Hands up who says yes. Hands up who says no. Okay, so you have to, some people didn't put up their hands. You have to choose either yes or no. Right? Yes, hands up. No, hands up. Okay, so why did you say yes? Why did you say yes? You have to forget the past, right? Yes is the right answer, okay? We have to forget the past, it's gone already. Okay, so we still have some people say no. We still have people who are thinking about the past. Okay? So we already spent this money on test marketing. Do you understand test marketing? We went out, we talked to people, we did some tests. Okay? We asked them, what do you think about the product? So, we're not going to get this money back. So what we're left with is a project which will give us 25 million profit if we don't think about the past, okay? So should we take this project or not? Not, of course, yes. It's going to make 25 million project, let's profit. Let's take the project, okay? Yes. So overall, it doesn't look like a good uh, outcome for the company, okay? But we are not, we are not at this point, at the start, before we start to test marketing. We are here, at this point, after the test marketing, okay? So we're not going to get this money back, so we have to just look forward and decide about the future. Does anybody have any question about that? Okay, do you have any other questions about uh, what we studied today? Okay then, uh, <coughs> let's finish there for today. Uh, so sorry, uh, I didn't call the uh, attendance yet. So just, uh, you can leave after I call your name on the attendance. So, uh, Anastasia. Uh, Daria, Daria, Aratom, John Jiang, John Jiang, Yi Ji Sun, Yang On Yang, Sun Sao Jiang. Kim Yuna. Thank you.